Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the first day of the Opera Euro Rapid Tournament. Uh, as you already know, this is the Rapid Time Control uh, Tournament online, 15 minutes, 10 seconds incrementation. And this is the part of the Champions Chess Tour organized by the Chess24.com platform. Now, I would like to show you the game from round four. Very interesting from the opening point of view, opening preparation. Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces is going to play against Sam Shankland and Sam Shankland from USA with the black pieces is going to play uh, the opening which he is a specialist because after c4 and c6 he even made a course about this structure pawn structure and possibilities how to continue the game for the chessable.com platform so definitely Sam Shankland is is the specialist here he's also very very strong theoretician uh, of course in practical chess as well uh, but he spends an uh, incredible amount of time uh, on his preparation so he is like encyclopedia and another thing is that Sam Shankland was in the team of Magnus Carlsen for the preparation uh, for the world champion uh, match in 2016 so Magnus knows him very well of course Sam knows Magnus as well he prepared a lot of openings for Magnus so you know Magnus Carlsen have to prepare something really special. Now, what would you play in this position with the white pieces? Because Magnus Carlsen in the move number two went for the queen a4. Queen a4, it looks like uh, completely, you know, out of the book, out of the on any, any of the books. But let's get back first uh, and let me just introduce to you some Sicilian defense when we play uh, a whopping preparing this d4 and black can play queen a5 preventing that now this is gonna be very very difficult it's possible but we have one game in the database uh, and it's not really really greatest so uh, this is a pretty well known move however not in this opening here we have the same position but um, black if black play e5 then white transpose the position with the opposite colors but with the tempo more so Sam Shanklat should be shocked or not how do you think uh, actually probably not now I would like to tell you why because in 2019 that is just you know two years ago in Tata Steel uh, he had this position and Vladimir Kramnik played against him knight f3 uh, and then he played d5 so this is the pretty normal idea for him and after g3 g6 uh, he met this queen a4 idea already which was also not new uh, in this case he played d4 but d4 move was played against Kramnik uh, three years earlier in 2016 and Kramnik lost to Topalov uh, yes in this in this opening exactly in this position and then in 2019 Sam Shankland won with the black pieces against Kramnik this is the ex world champion so definitely very strong player so he definitely knows these structures and what is going on uh, nothing is surprised for him uh, but what Magnus uh, prepared more so we have queen a4 by Magnus knight f6 Sam Shankland of course want to get to these positions with the g6 maybe g3 and then on some point played this d5 uh, we have knight f3, we have g6 as planned, and here Magnus Carlsen knows that g3 is something what Sam Shankland uh, feels very comfortable with, so he plays d4. Very natural move, controlling a lot of squares in the center. We have bishop g7, so we have the king's Indian defense structures, uh, more or less. We have knight c3, and now we have the castle. We have bishop f4, this is also what Magnus Carlsen likes to play bring the bishop on this diagonal sometimes uh, he points on the c7 so in some variations maybe the knight could try to jump there or something uh, but Sam Shankland immediately goes for the d6 so he has a, a very promising king's Indian defense structure with the queen on a4 and queen a4 is definitely misplaced here so it should be very comfortable for Sam Shanklands now and now we have one game in the database where e3 was played, but here we have h3. So preventing uh, black of, you know, moving any pieces to the, to the g4, for example, the bishop. Um, I don't think that the knight would have the reason to get there. 
task. But also, if Black prepares, for example, uh, e5, because in some moment of the game, Black definitely uh, want to play e5 or maybe c5 uh, and uh, challenge the central pawn on the d4. So this is possibility. Uh, this is why the bishop could potentially find um, the space on the h2, for example, after exchanging on e5. That just, I think this is the, the one of the plans. However, this h3 move is uh, quite slow in this case. We could say uh, that is a novelty that it was not played in the, in the past, but of course, this is known move in the king's indian structures we have knight b to d7 uh, and here instead of playing e3 which of course would be very natural magnus went for rook d1 first uh, we have c5 so uh, not e5 yet asking uh, the pawn on the d4 hey my friend what you gonna do here uh, we have e3 now c takes on d4 e takes on d4 so magnus still uh, keeps the control on the central squares and now it's coming e5 so sooner or later Later, e5 would have to come especially that magnus king is still in the center so it looks like very very dangerous for magnus uh, so it looks like magnus plays a little bit you know careless we have d takes on e5 d takes on e5 and now take this pawn or not of course the pawn cannot be taken because of the pin on the e5 so if you if you just play then we're gonna have queen e5 and you cannot defend um, this uh, this knight i mean you can defend but then the rook gonna put more pressure and at the end black gonna win one piece so this is why the bishop have to be moved and magnus didn't go with the with the bishop to h2 but rather bishop e3 so the idea is to block this pawn just in case if it's come to them to the e4 that it cannot follow and this pawn is a, a little bit isolated i mean it can it can be in the future supported by the f pawn but if f pawn is moved then of course uh, black gonna have the problems with the position of the king so first the king should should go to the to the h8 or uh, or so on um but some shankland immediately strikes in the center so we have knight d4 and now queen e7 so now we have the overprotecting on the e4 pawn uh, we have bishop e2 magnus is hurry with the castle of course uh, and now we have knight c5 again with the tempo it potentially maybe this knight in the future could jump to the d3 uh, we have queen c2 as the queen was under attack bishop d7 we have the castle and now developing move rook a to c8 uh, knight d to b8 now so attacking the pawn on the on the a7 uh, and this light square bishop usually is a is a pretty bad piece uh, especially in this position where it it really cannot be placed in the in the good place because we have this pawn on e4 so even if the bishop comes for example on this diagonal it would make no sense and it was just should you know own um own pawn so better just to exchange the bad piece for for the better piece so bishop b5 knight b5 and now we have a6 kicking the knight and here magnus could go for the very very normal move actually recommended by the engine uh knight c3 knight c3 is a, is a pretty good decent move um very very solid but magnus went for knight d6 and now what is going on here because if you check the knight has nowhere to go all the squares actually are blocked so everything what black have to do is actually attack this knight correct and then magnus gonna lose the knight but this is really really decent move we have rook c6 attacking the knight and now if the knight is defended of course uh black can continue the attack on them on the knight however we have b4 and now if the black takes the, the knight we're gonna have bishop c5 winning the exchange so uh, already you see that it's not that easy so something has to be done with the knight knight d3 probably would be the the bravest probably the best move here it would at least not lose the the pawn so for example in this case and uh, the best move for white would be this, because this this knight is under attack so probably uh, knight e4 would be the best just eliminating the defender of the of the knight so uh, of course black can just exchange everything and be pawned down but also could just take this pawn with the tempo on the on the queen 
White, of course, could exchange the knights first um, and only then go for the queen b3. And the material is equal. White stands slightly better here because of the pair of bishops in the open uh, open area, open board. So that should be easier to play by, by white. At least the engine really likes this position. Uh, but we have knight c to d7, pretty passive. And now this is the, the final move of Magnus c5. And look at this knight. This is so beautiful outpost, and it's already threatening to take on the on the b7. Magnus could take immediately, of course, but that would be exchange for the b4, so it doesn't make much sense. And now this would be the this would be the threat. Also, this knight is just in the in the perfect position. Also, it's watching at the e4 together with the queen, so black, you know, are tied to this um, to this square. So very very beautiful. So from the position where he had the key in the center which look like very very risky uh, he got into the position where he has you know total dominance out of nothing Magnus uh, suddenly you know create some beautiful position like this one and here some Shankland gonna have uh, huge problems to, to survive this first he want to do something with the pawn so we have b6 undermining the, the pawn on c5 uh, but now first queen a4 attacking the this pawn on a6 attacking the rook uh, and of course, if something like b5, then uh, white would be very happy uh, because this pawn is already protected past pawn uh, and it's already very nice uh, outpost on the on the d6. And the, and the defender cannot be undermined by other pawns anymore. So queen b3 later in the right moment, a4 can be played uh, and also put the pressure here on this pawn. Uh, that would be completely, you know, disaster. So Sam Shankland tries something else. He played knight b8. And this looks like a very, very passive move. However, it's a little, little poison here because take this pawn now or not. It looks like this knight is defending two pieces so we can take um, this this pawn for free. So why not to do it? Because if the knight takes, then of course the, uh, the rook is hanging. So why not to do that? However, that would not be the best idea because now we would have b takes on c5 and now the bishop is attacked twice. So here, this is the problem. So bishop b5, but now rook d6 okay and yes there is something like bishop c5 rook f to d8 but black would have too much activity and actually uh, two pieces for the rook and the pawn uh, of course this pawn is not that strong however it still you know uh, can work as a ram and on the right moment play for example e3 and maybe a little open the position of the king for now it's not possible but once this bishop is exchanged for the rook um, then it's not gonna protect e3 anymore so the position would be you know black would get some counterplay this is something what magnus didn't want to allow this is why he played rook d2 so simply improving the position of the pieces and uh, something has to be done knight f to d7 opening the diagonal for the bishop just to to make the bishop alive the problem is that now magnus just took the pawn on the e4 and another problem is that this knight cannot really be taken the problem is that after after bishop f3 we're gonna have this beautiful skewer and after queen e6 let's say try to defend it just exchange everything uh, and after exchanging as you already see this knight is already uh, under attack and white gonna win with the extra exchange and extra pawn that shouldn't be a problem to actually win that so that's why we have rook e6 now attacking the the knight uh, but now another weaknesses in the position of sam shankland we have bishop g5 attacking the queen now how to deal with that because if black uh plays something like knight f6 then magnus would probably just exchange everything and once he does that then c takes on b6 uh, and then just stabilize the position and with one extra pawn and much more active pieces because this bishop is watching at the at the e6 for now we have two babysitters here on the a6 and once this pawn collapse then of course white gonna have connected two connected past pawns and uh that of course is completely winning for for white so uh this is something what sam shankland would like to avoid he played f6 
kicking the bishop. The problem is that he also opened this diagonal. So immediately we have bishop c4 pinning the, the rook. We have king h8 and pinning. This is what I mentioned at the beginning. Like uh, it's good to, you know, before you make any f5, uh, f6 moves, then move the king to the h8. We have bishop e6, queen e6, and now as the bishop is under attack, then of course bishop e3. And now can this knight be taken? Let's see. Sam Shanklan took it, and now we of course gonna have rook d7. So we already know that if knight f7 we're gonna have a queen d7 and after exchanging this pawn actually should win the game the material is almost equal white have one extra pawn but this is extremely strong pawn uh, so we have another move we have b5 kicking the queen but the queen of course can come to d1 and still defending the rook so we have knight d7 queen d7 and now f5 opening the diagonal for the bishop uh, and here Max uh, just is very very confident with his pawn so he just pushed the pawn uh, saying hey you don't have any other counterplay so I'm gonna play c6 we have bishop e5 now defending them the c7 but Magnus say okay if you want you can exchange the bishop for the for the pawn I'm gonna have extra bishop I'm gonna win the game so in this position uh, Sam Shankland resigned so this was the, the the game number four now why Sam resigned he resigned because um, he has to bring the queen to the 8th rank because otherwise we're gonna have another queen on the on the c8 exchange for the for the rook the problem is that after rook d1 for example white have a lot of ways to win uh, but the easiest to understand would be just you know queen d8 queen d8 and then exchange for this queen uh, and then exchange also here if black tries to uh, protect this um, d8 the problem is that bishop h6 kicking them the rook or black would uh, have to actually sacrifice the exchange here but it doesn't really matter even if they save it the problem is now this bishop is without the protection so queen f7 and what to do with this with this bishop the bishop has to stay somewhere on this diagonal but also at the same time should keep an, um, an eye on the on the d8 uh, but it doesn't really matter whatever this bishop do even if if g7 then we would have bishop g7 rook g7 and now of course rook d8 and after queen d8 uh, and promotion we would have bank the checkmate so this way or another it doesn't really matter where the bishop goes uh we would have um, the winning position even the bishop goes i don't know let's say uh to the e5 then we would have rook d7 and then uh, the checkmate on h7 is just inevitable so of course that's that's forced this is why after c7 sam shankland resigned and i would like to show you the standings as promised magnus carlsen who lost first game against wesley so so he shocked everyone uh, and then he won four games in a row so <laughs> that was just amazing comeback magnus carlsen was just i don't know what what he did in the in the first First, uh, in the first game but he lost it Wesley so Jan Nepomniasi three and a half points so just behind Maxim Vasile Graf is doing much better online now than in the regular time control game so very interesting uh, we have also Anish Giri Taimur Rajabov with the three points Levon Aronian Sam Shankland uh, Hikaru Nakamura only two and a half points Jan Krzysztof Duda also two and a half points and uh, we have Daniel Dubov with only two points so pretty much uh, very disappointing he had a couple of winning positions so for example he had the winning position against Wesley so and and he just lost it just everything twisted uh, that this was just quite shocking game uh, Vidit Gujarati Alexander Grishchuk two points and Dean Gleren uh, he is not doing really well in 2020 also as you see in 2021 some problems we have Matthias Bluebaum uh, one and a half points together with Dink and Lenia Dominguez one point so that's the standings and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games from this opera Euro Rapid 2021 press subscribe smash this bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one